Hello, Kekkers here. 25 years ago, we were introduced to a glorious golden god descending from on high. An object of such pure, unbridled purpose and magnificence that we've been chasing that for 25 years. That glory, that magnificence was... Space Jam. Uh, yeah, I can't go further with that because I have to say I was never the biggest fan of Space Jam. Um, yeah, I liked the movie. It was okay. I watched it. Some good blend of, um, you know, cartoon animation and live action. It was goofy. It was silly. Um, Michael Jordan has his unique charisma. He has everything and he tossed himself into the role. It had Bill Murray in it. It was funny. It was fun, but it was just kind of there. And now, 25 years later, we've got this movie that's kind of been farted out on streaming in theaters, and now we've got to talk about it. Here we are, Space Jam 2. Now, before I tear this movie a new one, I have to say that there's the kernel, there, there's the speck of a good movie hiding in this. The opening scene featuring young LeBron and his whole thing being on the court. You can see his love of Looney Tunes, of gaming. That is an interesting character, and I would have loved to have followed that LeBron, that character. Seeing him growing up, seeing his influences, what he loves, what he dreams. Hell, pull a a sort of time travel thing and have him sucked into the future to meet his future self interacting with the tunes. Yeah, that would have been fun. Um, in fact, the kid actors in this movie aren't too bad. And uh, the one at the start, I could tell there's something, there's something there, there's something there. And they really should have gone with that. So, um, LeBron is your typical dad who is focusing too much on work and too much on everything being serious and not, and not enough on having fun with his kids. It's the same story we've seen a million times over a million decades. And I was not expecting that in a Space Jam movie. Now, I'm not going to spend this whole review comparing the new Space Jam to the old Space Jam. Suffice to say, the old Space Jam felt like it was telling a story about the tunes and Jordan was pulled into it. This one feels like it's not even that. This one feels like it's let's take LeBron and pull him through a bunch of Warner Brothers properties. This movie felt like the opening to an E3 or a presentation for shareholders to show the people, to show people like what the company owns. This is a commercial for Warner Brothers. This isn't a commercial for even for Looney Tunes. This is a commercial for the Warner Brothers property. It's like they want you to go to this movie, leave, and buy Warner Brothers stock. The thrust of the story is that a computer algorithm played by Dom Cheadle, who is utterly wasted in this role. I mean, he does get some good scenery chewing. He really is the best thing in this. Dom Cheadle, you're better than this movie. But I, I hope you enjoyed your paycheck. And I hope they paid you a lot. You are better than this movie. And yeah, you actually did. You carried this on your shoulders. You must. Someone give this man a back rub because he must be sore. All right, so he pulls LeBron James and his son into the virtual world, into a server containing every single one of Warner Brothers' properties where LeBron is forced to battle him in a basketball game in order to get his son back or be trapped in this world with him. It looks a bit like they were setting up some kind of weird uh, development with them, with uh, maybe him trying to escape to the real world. I have no idea what Don Cheadle's plan was in this movie. It makes zero sense. But anyway, okay, so... Uh, LeBron James is trapped in a virtual world, he's connected to every single one of the Warner Brothers movies, and it looks a lot like a theme park ride. Watching this movie, it feels like they go through or past a bunch of different Warner Brothers worlds, and they just play the music, and they show like little clips, and this is reference the movie. 
the, the Looney Tunes characters are on all these different Warner Brothers properties and they've got to gather up a team because, of course, they can't just, you know, take Superman, uh, take, any, take Neo or any of the other characters who would solve the problems immediately. It's got to be the Looney Tunes, and at least that's addressed as Bugs being his asshole self and just roping his whole friends into this thing instead of who LeBron wants. But yeah, okay, so they go through, they're finding the different characters, and that is really the biggest drawback of the film. It is just referenced at this point. And yes, Looney Tunes parody stuff. That's Looney Tunes. That's the start of this was in the original cartoons. Like taking celebrities here and there, popping them into the cartoons. But that was parody. This is literally just the thing. It's the difference between Spaceballs and one of the an epic movie. It, it is literally just, hey, take the Looney Tune, put them in the thing. Oh, the majority of the film, I would say, is animated. And, yeah, they, they're the, the animated characters. LeBron's animated. So it's not that mix of live action and animation like the original was. It is also just them for a large part of the movie. And also, a lot of people are pretty dumb in film. It's pretty dumb. Pretty dumb commercial. Um, once they get to the basketball game, which is supposed to be like the thing that they've been building up to, everything switches to CG. And no more hand-drawn style, even though I can tell it was digitally drawn. But now it's just full on CG. And some of the characters look better in CG than others. But overall, it wasn't too bad. But then we get live-action LeBron with CG characters, and we've seen CG characters in live-action people all the time. One of the, one of the interesting things was the live-action actors and the, you know, hand-drawn or digital actors. The CG ones, it's not as charming. Uh, there's lots of callbacks to the original Space Jam. There's some more cameos. Oh dear God, the basketball game is nothing but cameos. It is literally just, here's a crowd, here's more properties, um, buy more Warner Brothers stock. The game itself actually is pretty fun. Um, lots of excitement, it's goofy, it's stupid, um, it's them playing a video game. And you get the whole, oh no, they're so far behind, how can they catch up? And yes, of course. Of course they're going to do that. Surprise! LeBron is going to win at the end. You know this. I just feel that this is a film which, with its premise, didn't... It could have done more. You know, it could have done different. It could have been more than just a commercial, which is what it felt like it was. I had to struggle a lot to get through the rest of this, but hey, I did it. And I'll say for you guys, Hey, if you already have HBO Max, pop it in, skip through different scenes, you might have some fun. Don't go out to see it. Uh, don't pay extra money for it. Just, if it's there, it's there. Um, anyway, this is Keckers, that was Space Jam, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Classic. Welcome to the Space Jam.